Okay, um, welcome back. This is Dory from J. Jim Hunter, and today I'm going to talk about colors, jadeite and colors. So this is our 246 vlog. Um, we talked about history, chemistry, where did jade come from, how we classify roughs, which is stone, where they come from, and, and this one is about colors. So J. Jim Hunter is about hunting uh, for jadeite and gems. Uh, with COVID-19, we're, we're pretty much restricted to staying in Thailand, but uh, that, that's okay because this is a very rich market for, for jade and gems. But we've also hunted for jadeite in China uh, and pearls in China. And we welcome everyone to join us on the hunt. Uh, some folks actually have a very specific thing in mind, or some folks don't really know what they want. And just watching what uh, Barbara picks out and uh, checks out, uh, people may be interested in it. But the vlogs are all about helping you become more informed, more educated, so as a result, a better shopper and better collector. And with the money that we do make, uh, we contribute uh, a portion to help those in need. Okay, so jadeite can be classified in many ways. We talked about chemistry uh, a long time ago, maybe over 300 years ago. Um, uh, there was no difference between jadeite and nephrite. It was called jade. But in 1863, uh, a scientist, a French scientist, actually was able to differentiate chemically the difference between between the two. So um, today we're going to talk a little bit about, more about chemistry, primary, secondary colors, and how the different combinations of the chemistry causes different colors in the jadeite itself. And uh, two more vlogs that I think will be very interesting for people is uh, treated versus untreated, which is um, is the jade real or not, and whether it's been made to look good. Uh, but that, that's a very interesting uh, vlog that I'm looking forward to talking about. So onward with colors. Um, jade eye colors are divided into two groups. Uh, one is primary colors, and the second is secondary colors. Um, I forgot why I put the note here, but uh, jade eye from Myanmar and jadeite from Guatemala are similar. Uh, quality of jadeite, in my mind, is much better um, when it comes from Myanmar. Uh, but one big difference when it comes to colors is Guatemalan jade does not have that rich, vivid, imperial green. This is a color chart put together by Mason and Kay. They are a jewelry firm in, I believe, Washington State, and I thought this is a very nice chart that gives you a full kaleidoscope of what jade looks like, the jade colors look like. So you have the lavender here, and you have the full range of green, you have the red, the yellow, the white, which is more pure, and the blacks. <clears throat> okay, so jade, pure jade, is clear and or white depending on the texture, uh, all of the inclusions that are in the jade, uh, the translucency of it. Um, so an opaque uh, white jadeite will be uh, like white and a very transparent uh, white jadeite will appear as clear. Uh, also some people call it icy jade. Okay, green and black jadeite. So notice the similarity between these, these two chemical formulas. Uh, that Fe3 plus replaces the aluminum. The Cr chromium, the Fe is iron or is iron, 
the chromium CR replaces the aluminum. And depending on how much, what combination, you will get green or black jadeite. So I thought these slides are great for you because you can always go back and study them if you have um, uh, the interest. Um, here, darker green, as I mentioned, with more iron replacement, you can get a darker green or you can get black. The imperial rich, that rich imperial green uh, occurs if you have more of the chromium replacement. And by the way, these are these are considered trace elements. So the dominant the dominant uh, chemical that that make up the jadeite is this formula here, and then you have scattered amounts of this uh, sodium ferric silicate or sodium chromate silicate scattered in the stone. And there may be a concentration of it, and you'll get this rich. Uh, uh, dark green, or you get shades of it, but it depends on you know how it has embedded itself in the in the stone. So lavender jadeite uh, is interesting in that I think there's three or four elements that we place this aluminum here. First, we have ferric, ferrous, and ferric iron replacing the aluminum. We have manganese replacing the aluminum. And we have titanium replacing the aluminum. And last, we have gallium. Now, um, I've been trying to find some research, some documents that explain the combinations of the interactions of the uh, of these elements that create the lavender color. I'm sure it has, you know, some physics associated with it as well as chemistry, but um, at least for the moment, just know that when the aluminum is replaced by these other trace elements, you get that lavender. Okay, the two secondary colors, red and yellow, um, this is different in that it's not a it's not a chemical element replacing the aluminum, but it's actually another uh, another stone um, that intermixes with the jadeite. And if to, for red jadeite, you get um, this red hematite that intermixes with the jadeite. And for yellow jadeite, you have limonite. So I gave you some examples here of more pure, purer uh, limonite and hematite. But when they start to intermix with the jadeite, and the way it works is, you know, the jadeite will come from these veins up at the top of the mountain, and then eventually it finds its way into the soil, and the soil will put a covering over the jadeite and that soil will have contained hematite or limonite. And if it does, it, it itself becomes uh, intermixed, uh, a trace element that impacts the color of the jadeite. So uh, side comment, uh, I do have a picture of a stone, but if you were to heat the yellow jadeite, um, Often that yellow will become red because there's red hematite that sort of like is a recessive color that becomes a dominant color once it's subject to heat. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into treated versus untreated. Okay, so here, um, so I talked about the primary colors of green and lavender and the whites and the blacks. So I'm going to uh, to go over the many different types of greens that exist. 
and I used a source, uh, a professor, Wu Yong, uh, who has a laboratory as well as teachers in a university in Hong Kong. I used a lot of her examples only because I I had pictures. She had pictures in, in her document. So this is a list. Uh, I will go through them individually, but these are all different kinds of green jadeite. So it's just not green. You have the imperial, fu young, you know, all of these different types of green. And, and they represent, um, they represent designs that people could ask for when they're looking for, for jadeite bangles or, or cabochons or whatever. Okay, so green colors. Um, so there's all kinds of green, um, uh, jadeite green. When you're trying to figure out the right color or describing it, there's a thing called hue, that hue, H-U-E, that's just another word for color. So you have a, you know, a, a rich color, Christmas green. I'm not sure that's Christmas green. It looks good like Christmas green, but if there's more blue, you might describe that jadeite as having more blue and there's some jadeite that has a yellow tint to it. Oops. Uh, second is tone. Uh, tone is the intensity of the color. So this could be a, you know, just a blah type green or it can be a very rich, vivid green. So that means it's a very saturated it has a high saturation of green. And then there's also the uh, tone. The tone is the, uh, what I'll call it, the, the intensity of the color. So if it's sort of like a dull, it will be, have a low tone. If it's just like a, a bright uh, tone, um, a bright vividness, I'm not sure why this keeps on advancing, but it has a bright vividness it'll have a intense tone to it. So the combination of the, those three words it really describe, helps you describe what uh, people might be looking for. Okay, so I talked about uh, the different kinds of jades and I thought pictures might be helpful for you. Uh, these, are, these are examples of what I call imperial green uh, the pictures were actually taken from uh, an acquaintance uh, who owned a pretty big store in, in Bangkok. And he had taken these to America and he sold this one. He sold this one for 240,000 US. And uh, it's a pure, deep, vivid green. You can see how transparent it is. Uh, when it comes to grain, it, it's so fine that it has that transparent look. Um, uh, what he decided, what the buyer decided to do, he was going to pay 240 for it, and it has, let me see, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16, 17 cabochons, and he was going to sell them as rings. So um, tons of money for oops, tons of money for for uh, for the imperial green. Um, this one, um, I can't remember if he sold it or not, but his uh, price was one hundred and sixty thousand U.S. So you can see how you know the the call it top of the line imperial green can be quite. Pricey. This looks like Barber's Bangle. Uh, it's fairly pure, even colored. It's translucent, not transparent, and it's got a fairly even green, uh, fairly even grainy texture. So this is called Fu Young Green Jadeite. Then we have an oily green jadeite dark green mixed with some gray, blues, and yellow. Colors tend to be dull, so the tone is a 
not terribly intense. Translucent, translucency very. You can tell that if you put a backlight on it, uh, you'll see the translucency. On these, they'll be, uh, I'm going to guess these are more opaque. These might be a little bit more translucent. And, and if you look at the surface of it, they may have a shiny surface. So that's oily green jadeite. This is dark green jadeite. So dark green, as we saw before, could have a lot of, I believe it was iron in it. Um, it deep green, it's a dark green, varies in tone or intensity. There might be some black spots, as you see on this one, granular texture. Transparency um, would be opaque. Uh, maybe with the strong torch light, you could get some transparency or translucency on a thin piece of, of dark green jadeite. It may contain cosmochlor. Um, depending on who you talk to, uh, since we put the flog together, um, we've learned that there's many schools of thought and you have one school of thought on one end and this woman, Professor Wu Yang, uh, believes that this is part of the Fei Shui family of jadeite. It's, it's a dark black with green in it. Uh, it's chemically different as I showed you in the chemical blog and it's called Cosmochlor. But, but um, the Chinese and the Hong Kong E um, will call it jadeite, black jadeite. Qi Long Thin Green, also called Ti Long Sheng jadeite, also called Tian Long Sheng jadeite. Okay, this is a, um, uh, a dark green, um, very saturated. It has degrees of translucency, uh, but it's that mixed green with uh, some, look like some dark, dark, dark green in it. Um, the description says it has white spots in it, and I don't know if there's white spots here. I think that's more of a reflection. Pea green, uh, very common. and. Uh, sold many of these. Um, it has, uh, has a mixed texture in it, it's translucent, it's, um, uh, I, I think it's a beautiful color. It, it may have some yellows as you see right here and, and white intermixed with it. Um, uh, I've read and I put it here uh, depending on the clarity, they have other names, so sugar pea, ice pea, colorful pea, coarse pea. Um, we, um, we have not had enough requests from people with these specific levels of color, and it would make the hunt quite challenging, but um, there, there are many, many names for the greens, and as you can see, within uh, a particular color category, there are subcategories. This one's interesting. I've never seen it in person. There are streaks of jadeite. I mean, these are like parallel streaks of jadeite um, that uh, decorate the white, and it's called golden silk. So maybe the silk is the, uh, call it the threads of green. Flower green jadeite, um, it's got green patches, it's got dark green patches, and just like, just like with the golden, not the, with the pea green, couple of slides back. The flower green jadeite has many subcategories and uh, 
I'm not at a point of knowing all the categories, but it is something that uh, I'll continue to research and and explore during our hunts. Bold and green jadeite. Um, uh, I sort of choked when I I chatted with someone asking for the cost of this. It was over a hundred thousand. Um, <clears throat> I generally have this feeling that um, you don't know really if the jadeite is real until you touch it and feel it. And maybe if it's that expensive, you you take it to a lab. But this was being sold out of a firm in, in Singapore, and they showed me a copy of their lab report. But the report was by a local lab that they claim was uh, very reputable, which, um, you know, I had no need to argue. But this is a very expensive floating flower jade. It's very translucent, transparent. Uh, it's got that floating flower. The one on the left here is a floating flower um, medallion and bangle that someone made for us. Um, we we asked a gentleman to to take a rock that we picked out, or he picked out, we picked it out together, and he actually went through the whole process of converting a rock, a rough, into a bangle and this medallion. Which, which we have, so this is very special for us. But these are examples of floating flower jadeite. Uh, green on snow, moss on snow, I think these are beautiful. Um, it's got a, you know, call it pure white or, or clear jadeite with the uh, smatterings of this rich green. And, and they vary in and quality and based on the characteristics of texture, transparency, uh, vividness of the color, you know, the tone hue um, and saturation. This is more opaque -ish, but nonetheless a very, very pretty uh, necklace. So that is what's in a name, green jadeite. So you folks can go back and look at the slides um, this is, this is purple jadeite and violet jadeite. Um, I actually talked to a person again, another, uh, 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 woman in Singapore. These are typical size donut, the size of a quarter, between a quarter and a half a dollar. They're not terribly big. And and they went for eight thousand dollars a piece, but I would have to buy both at the same time, so sixteen thousand. Um, this was the person I spoke to, and where also I asked for a lab, and oops, and they gave me uh, they let me see a picture of the lab report, and it's supposedly untreated, authentic jadeite, um, purple and expensive. I never heard of the, the lab company. I'm not sure why, but uh, many of the international laboratories that we have available in Bangkok uh, maybe do not see an <clears throat> enough demand to have their own labs in, in some of these other countries, including Myanmar, including Myanmar and Singapore. Uh, this one, I didn't get a price, but this was, I know it was expensive. Uh, it's a violet jadeite necklace. Um, this is uh, an eggplant. This is Uyong's picture again. An eggplant, lavender, pinkish lavender. Here's another one, uh, lavender with green. Okay, so this is white jadeite. So with a very fine texture, it appears glassy, it appears icy. So to the left, you have 
colorless, fine grain, highly transparent, but not clear. I don't know what I mean by sky glass. Um, here you have icy jade. Again, it's colorless or nearly colorless. Oops. But it's less transparent than this one. But it's very translucent. So, um, so this is pure jadeite, and because the grain is very fine, because the texture is very fine, it tends to appear glassy or icy. I put this here, maybe it's not really the right place, but I put it here because it can be mistaken for icy jade. When I asked for the prices of these, it was so cheap I got skeptical. I thought maybe it was glass, but we had a um, one of our friends who had a lab in Myanmar, in Mandalay, and he said it was Albert. So, um, but for, but when you first look at it, you might think that it, oops, sorry, uh, it's jadeite. But if you hit the two pieces together or one of the donuts against the bangle, you don't get that jadeite sound. So it was very clear that it wasn't jadeite. And albite, by the way, is, is jadeite before it becomes jadeite. So there's, uh, I don't want to get into the chemical, but there's a chemical transformation that, that takes place from here to here with lots of low pressure lots of, and lots of low heat. And I don't know what the time frames are. It could be 100,000 or a million years, but um, this eventually becomes this with the right uh, environmental um, <clears throat> circumstances. So this is glutinous white pea jade. It's, it's like sticky rice for those people who know what sticky rice is. And here's white pea. That's white jade. And then we have the black jade, the black rooster which is almost, almost looks like um, you know, solid black. Um, then you have the inky green where it looks black. It may have a shade of green to it. Um, but when you put the light behind it, the torch light behind it, you can see that there is green. And this is, oh, that, that's right. This is, uh, has omphasite in it. Omphasite is um, part of that beige way family of jadeite, cosmochlorin, omphasite. And we just purchased a whole bunch of these beads. They are clearly jadeite, but they don't, they're not quite, um, they, don't, they don't have that shininess. So you have this black, dry, green um, jadeite. But th these are gorgeous. Um, Barbara just bought a whole bunch of them, and, um, and you'll be seeing them soon. This is red jadeite. Uh, it's beautiful. These are beautiful. And then you have the yellow jadeite. So just as I wrote here, the yellow jadeite caused by the soil permeating the skin. It's just like with the red. It's the hematite that permeating the skin and and influencing the color of the jadeite. I put these here because one of the challenges we have when we're hunting is terminology. We think of imperial jadeite. People here in Asia will say old mine. We would talk about apple modeled, apple jade, people is, uh, here will call it flower green. Moss and green, people will call it pea green. I'm sort of going backwards, but, but what we might call it as Westerners, uh, they will have different names for it. So um, uh, it, there's an adjustment. We have to ask the question, what do you mean by old mine? 
what do you mean by new mind? I put this in, uh, you folks can read it, um, you know, at your leisure. This was uh, put together by Mason and Kay. Again, these are some colors that that are used and a description next to them. But they go back to this one chart that I talked about. Mason and Kay is an American firm. Chloromelanite. Oh, I that has been changed and and so all of these you see in this chart, but the chloromelanite is sort of like the cosmochlor uh, in omphocyte, but uh, I just learned that this group of people, they're, they're all gemologists, and even they're trying to figure out names. You know, they just chain chloromelanite as, as an international organization, and they call it omphocyte. So here you have an American firm. Maybe they haven't updated it yet, but um, the international community in, I think it was 2018, uh, 2018, announced that what they used to call the names on the left, the new names are the names on the right. So ur uraite here is actually a cosmochloric chemical that you find in meteors that make its way to the Earth. So they decided to call it cosmochlor. But there's all of these other names that I've never heard of that they call omphocyte. Chloromelanite, the first time I heard it was in the Mason K document, and, and they now call it omphocyte in terms of international standard. So you can look this up and it'll be a whole bunch of complicated stuff, but I thought I would share that um, we get confused with name and even the professionals are, are living in this dynamic world of name changing. So I found that interesting for you folks. Um, again, you can look this stuff up and uh, enjoy your reading. Okay, so that's it. Um, I hope I didn't take too long, but I think this this uh, vlog was an interesting one in that, uh, and maybe more confusing in that there are so many names out there that you have to really scrutinize what people mean when they say a name. You know, East versus West, and and uh, even Miss Uyong, a John, the Professor Uyong. Not everyone agrees with what she had to say. So, so you have to stay very fluid when you're canvassing the market, hunting the market, and talking to the professional, whether they're professionals at gym labs or professionals who are selling you um, merchandise. So, uh, but this gives you a, a sense of what it's like, and you have something to look back on if you are so inclined. So like us on Facebook. Oops. Like us on Facebook. Uh, submit your comments or questions on Messenger to Barbara or J. Jim Hunter. Uh, tell your friends about us. Uh, we're all about selling natural jade. Uh, and as at we think very nice prices and uh, anything that that even suggest it being uh, defective, uh, we will not sell to you. We have a box that we put this stuff in. And uh, we don't sell uh, treated jade eye at all. And that's, that's another topic that I'm anxious to talk about. But tell your friends about it. Uh, we do want to hunt for you. It's a little bit harder uh, for us, but it's a lot more fun for us. So thank you very much. That's it.